Welcome to Berkshire Maine Society's Per Wag Adopt Cable TV Show. My name is John Peralt. I am the Executive Director of the Berkshire Maine Society and also your host. Today's topic is combating pet overpopulation and animal cruelty through humane education uh, efforts and outreach. And uh, today's guest is Karen Kalberg, who is the Berkshire Maine Society's Community Outreach Coordinator. Welcome, Karen. Hi. Thank you, John, for having me. So, Karen, how long have you been? How long have you been teaching kids about um, well, Maine education? I'm going into my eighth year as a staff member, um, but before that, I actually worked as a, a volunteer going into the schools. And um, so, eight years of uh, learning you know that uh, humane education is is a main mission of Berkshire Humane Society and just trying to keep things new and fresh and, and with you know today's events that are going on and just also relating back to the kids and uh, and how they treat animals and and um, it's been pretty pretty successful I would say. Let's start out with talking about you know the traditional forms of humane education and that would be really classroom visits Right. Um, classroom visits uh, are um, done by uh, the teachers calling and, and, you know, asking to schedule for a presentation. And uh, they run about an hour long. Um, I do take um, my dog with me, Daffodil. Um, I did have another dog, Noah, who um, had gone with me for seven years. And, um, and Daffodil is now, you know, she's, she's the new uh, ambassador. She's still a rookie. She's still a rookie, but she's doing really great. And she's a, a great ambassador for Berkshire Humane Society because she came from the shelter. Mm -hmm. How many classroom visits are you doing a year now? Well, I do it based on children. Um, we see about 2,500 children a year, and that's because, um, for example, I had one on Friday, and it was the entire school. So it was one classroom visit, but right. was, but I got to see all of the children in the school. So we're just trying to make you know use of our our time that we can get our foot into a, into a school because okay. it's hard to get into schools. Right. They're very busy. And we all know and we all read about school budgets and how there's yes. cuts and things like that. What's it cost to get to Karen Kalberg and the Berkshire Humane Society to come in and visit a classroom? Well, you know, they're still amazed when I say it's free. Uh, they, I, I do. They keep saying it's free, you know, and they can't believe it. I said, well, you can bring donations. You know, we love dog food and paper towels. You can bring that if you like, but um, it's still free of charge, and, um, and that's what's so uh, great about Berkshire Humane mm -hmm. Society. And I'll put on my executive director hat for a moment and okay. say what pays for that really is truly when... Uh, you know, our, our, our donors out there, our membership, uh, do their $35 family me or $50 family membership and they send in their donations. But some of the things that what their funds go to pay for is our humane education programs as well. Um, different topics, different classroom curriculum for different grades. Ab what are we talking about these days? Absolutely. Um, what I usually start with is um, just introducing myself and Daffodil and we just talk about all the great things that Berkshire Humane Society does for people, not just for their pets. And then we talk about being a responsible pet owner and I go through a list of about what I call my seven heavy hitters and I let the kids kind of interact and give me what those things are. Um, it usually starts with I, I like food, water and shelter. Um, the basics and then I also mentioned that if they don't if if someone is not providing that to their pet then that's actually a felony and they and I can sick the uh, MSPCA police after them or an ACO which you know brings yep. that into their because kids like to be like the idea of being an animal cop too right. so you're trying to interest them. So what you're really doing is you're actually empowering those kids that they can even make they can make a difference. Absolutely when I, I leave I say you know you're my eyes and ears now you now know how you should be taking care of an animal and please tell either an adult or um, you know your teacher or a parent or you know call me and um, we'll, we'll help those animals and I do leave them with that feeling that you know the animals are not alone out there. Yeah. Yes. Pet overpopulation? I always find it interesting that spay and neutering is like on the last of the children's list and I always say now you forgot to mention one a really important thing is spaying and neutering your pets because it makes them happier, healthier and um, and then I usually bring in um, uh, some math uh, uh, samples and we say that if you take one pair of cats and you let them go unspayed or unneutered in 10 years those cats you know they have cats they have four kittens in six months those four kittens will have have kittens and on and on and the progression is up to almost 10 million cats and that really sends a you know a chill down their spine like right. and I say can you bring home to 45 cats tonight yeah. to take care of those you know Boy, that would that would solve our problem today it would but none of them can so it's and we a, know that that's not a so it's giving them real examples in math to help okay. that way. 
What around about safety around pets? I know that that's uh, one of the more popular ones. Right. Um, when I first started, that really wasn't kind of part of the curriculum. But I've um, I've learned that there are so many children getting um, you know bites from the family pets or pets when they go in to visit relatives. Um, so we talk about being safe around a dog. Um, not having eye contact with the dog is really important. Um, and just giving that dog a personal bubble, that space right. that all children need to, and explain that in their terms. They can't talk, but what they do is they growl, they show their teeth, and the children need to be um, you know, receptive of all those little things, indicators that a dog is really scared and you need to back off and give them space and don't push the issue. Also, mm -hmm. don't, you know, don't interrupt the mom, don't interrupt them when they're sleeping, eating, or playing with toys. Right, yes. right. And, and I know, because I've been in the shelter for many years, that one of my jobs at one point, as, as many, was doing some humane education and outreach in the, in the classrooms as well. And uh, I know how many visits I was doing some years ago, but are you doing more visits over the last five years or less? Where's the trend going in having, um, you I'm, know, being invited into these classrooms? I'm seeing more after-school programs um, because children have to stay with their parents working more. So I am being invited to a lot of after-school programs, which is fine. And then you get um, an assortment of different age levels. So that is definitely an increase. Um, love to go and, you know, do any type of... Uh, programs. Muddy Brooks is one that has a really great one and yes. Why, why do you think you're seeing less classroom time and more after school time? That would be because of MCAS and because um, you know teachers have a strict uh, adherence guidelines. to their schedule and guidelines and it is tough on them and they really um, they don't have the time that they used to to give to humane education. Um, so we just try and, and work with the uh, you, you know the educational requirements right. and, and somehow work in that way. And I know that when we talk about humane education, it's certainly not the quick fix to end pet overpopulation or animal cruelty in our community, um, but I know Berkshire Humane Society believes firmly that it, it helps build a solid foundation. So as the, all these kids that you're reaching on a, on a daily and weekly and monthly mm -hmm. basis through the school year, um, you know, they're, they're learning about kindness and compassion. And hopefully um, as the years go on, we're seeing more of a kinder, gentler, more responsible community. And I can vouch for that. I've been there for, for many, many years. And back in 1984, when I first started, we were handling around 5,000 animals a year. And today we're you know hovering around the 1,500 uh, number of animals that we've handled. And I really believe that a big piece of that is that kids that have had our programs for years yeah. are growing up and realizing that um, you know they need to have their dog, they need to have their cat spayed and neutered. They should be keeping their cats indoors because you know you know Mrs. Kahlberg told us that's what we should do. Right. And uh, we're going to take a quick break, but when I want to when I come back, I want to talk a little bit more about the other type of programs that you've created to help bring uh, humane education into Berkshire County and our, our community as well. So. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to show you a few animals that are in desperate needs of homes here at the Berkshire Humane Society. And uh, we'll be, Karen and I will be right back. 